we've done a lot of work. Uh, unfortunately, we've lost like 500,000 cars last uh, year. Uh, we think that this year the situation will get better. We estimated potentially we will lose uh, again uh, 300,000 units compared to the potential of the cars we could produce and sell. Uh, and we see the situation right now is still pretty complicated, but we see uh, H2 uh, 2022 getting into a normal situation. That's our estimate. So what does this mean for product mix? Rosanna asked about the value over volume strategy, and clearly it has paid off your focus on more lucrative models. Is that going to shift this year? I think we have the chance to have uh, at least, uh, we will launch seven products this year. Uh, three of them are into what we call the C segment, that means the compact car segment, which is the biggest uh, uh, let's say mid-sized car, biggest segment uh, in in Europe with uh, two cars. One is electric and one is a C-segment SUV. And obviously that will have an in effect on our profitability and our potential to reconquer market share in uh, many markets. So I think it will be, it will start to be product uh, uh, driven, the recovery, not only because of the work that we do on the efficiency of the system. So it's a kind of a, will be kind of a different game. What does that mean for margins then in 2022? We believe that uh, we, we can continue to increase the margin because of the product effect. Uh, we have established a lot of you know healthy practices to our go-to-market strategy, to our commercial policy, and to the way we build and we allocate components to you know the more lucrative uh, models, as you have seen. But as I said, uh, the arrival of new cars will have certainly a positive uh, uh, effect uh, on the potential of Renault to increase its uh, margin. We'll continue our, with our, uh, let's say, ambitious price, pricing policy. So we think we will have still a chance uh, you know, to increase pricing in a kind of an inflationary environment. So on that side, I, I'm pretty optimistic about uh, uh, Renault uh, going the right direction also in 2022 and we will continue to reduce cost. Uh, and chip supply shortages is one thing but on terms of reducing those costs what about rising costs of raw materials at the start of the production chain and on this a particularly interesting story that you're backing this moratorium on deep sea mining how is that going to play into it? Now, these are two different things I, I believe there's not much connection between, between the two things one is a kind of a uh, ESG responsibility decision that uh, that Renault has taken to position itself on the matter, which is very consistent with uh, our ambitions uh, ESG plan to protect the environment, so to have a very clean and traceable uh, supply chain of materials. Uh, the, the 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 situation on um, on 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 the cost is that we will probably continue to. Uh, reduce the fixed cost. We have pot still potential, not in the amount uh, that we were able to, you know, kind of pull off uh, this year because we we went down in fixed cost 2.3 billion, out of them 2 billion structural. So we will not get the same speed, but we will continue to work. The big challenge in that environment is obviously the variable cost uh, of the, of the components because you have inflation in materials, uh, scarcity. That that means uh, some of the suppliers are you know taking the opportunity to increase price, but the performance of purchasing area was very good this year, and we are continuing to you know to to push to reduce the, the full cost of our cars. But that's a big challenge in that kind of environment.